Peace and life family. I hope that y'all are well. So I just went live not too long ago about the new moon in Taurus that we have in our horizon today. And that'll be here for the next 28 day cycle. Um, but the video accidentally deleted you guys. I don't know how that happened, but it accidentally deleted. So whatever. I'm recording a new one and I'm going to share the information. Now, the benefit about me having to record the new video is that um, I recognize that in the last video, I was talking very fast and sharing a lot of information. So I'm just going to try to reiterate some of the same information that I shared in the live, but maybe talk a little bit slower, but still keep the video kind of short, which is like a balance, <laughs> you know, because um, I do try to give you guys as much information as I can, but also not, you know, hold you. Not I don't want to be with before you long, you know, as the pastors used to say that. So I want to be before you long, you know. Um, so I'm gonna try to keep it short and quick. My intentions with this video is just to simply explain exactly why we value moon energy, specifically the new moon, various rituals and practices that you can practice during the new moon to make sure that your manifestations are abundant, as well as just ending with the value of having a new moon in Taurus and exactly what that means. So let's get started. Um, now the reason that we value the moon as a whole, whether if it's new, crescent, half moon, full moon, whatever, the reason that we value the moon as a whole is because the moon is the way that we tell time of life. Now, there are two different ways to tell time. So you have sun and you have moon. The sun is the way that we tell the time of day. The moon is the way we tell the time of life cycles. So when I say life cycles, I'm speaking of life in the universe as a whole. So the universe we are one energy. That is why it is universe. We are one versatile energy. When I say one versatile energy, that just simply means that we are one energy that manifests in various different forms. So one energy that manifests in various different forms. Now, what that manifestation looks like is we are one energy that manifests as water, that manifests as plants, various species of plants, manifests as animals, various species of animals, manifests as human beings, different ethnicities and ethnic groups and tribes and locations, but we are one energy being that manifests in different forms. That is what makes us a universe. So when I say life, the moon is how we tell the time of a life cycle. All living things live within the same realm of time, and we tell that time based on the moon. Now, depending on the phase of the moon determines where we are within that time and what type of energy we vibrate on within that time and how our energy interacts within the universe. Because we all are one energy being, because we are one universe and we are all interconnected, the moon and the sun impact Every, impacts everything within the universe. Everything is impacted within the moon and the sun. Now, speaking specifically on the moon, I'll do a separate video about the sun, but speaking specifically on the moon, when we think about the moon's impact, we have to think about it as a vibrational thing. We are energy, so we all vibrate on different frequencies. Our vibration is basically how we measure our energy level and our connection within the universe. So yes, we are energy, but sometimes our connection or our vibration is lowered depending on environmental factors. Environmental factors could be stress. Environmental factors could be fear. Environmental factors could be financial issues. Environmental factors could be vibrating high because you're experiencing love and you're experiencing abundance and you're experiencing a light energy and a peace energy. So that increases your vibration. So negative things decrease your vibration. Negative things like fear, hurt, harm, danger, panic, being afraid, all of that decreases your vibration and the feelings of love, peace, and happiness and gratitude increase your vibration. So we all vibrate on various frequencies depending on our environmental experiences. And this includes animals and plants and water, so on and so forth, right? Now, when we think about the moon and how the moon interacts with our vibration, depending on the phase of the moon determines how it interacts with our vibration. Now, why is the new moon so valuable? The new moon is that it gives us the opportunity to reset ourselves and to reset our vibration from the last moon cycle. 
So we just completed a moon cycle. The full moon indicates the end of a moon cycle. Now we have a new moon. So that means we have started a new 28 day cycle. Each moon cycle is 28 days. A little bit different, but similar to the European calendar where it's about 30 to 31 days. The moon cycles are consistently 28 days. So we have a 28 day moon cycle and the new moon represents a be new beginning, a new opportunity to reset and restart for the new moon cycle. That means our vibration is reset if we come in intentional about resetting our vibration. And this is what moves us into rituals and practices to reset your vibration for the new cycle. And that way you have the opportunity to manifest your deepest desires for this new cycle. So what are some things you can do to reset your vibration? To reset your vibration, number one, you definitely want to make sure that you are detoxing your body. Now, to detox your body, you want to make sure you are consuming herbs such as senna, S-E-N-N-A, senna. S-E-N-N-A. That is a very good detox that you can find in your local grocery store. I believe Yogi Tea has a detox brand that includes Senna. Um, there is also a green box called Ballerina Tea that they sell in a lot of grocery stores, uh, beauty supply stores. That is also pure Senna herb. Um, they also have another green box called Dieter's Tea that is also pure Senna that they sell in a lot of grocery stores and beauty supply stores. And the box is only about like two or three dollars, but it's pure senna. Senna is a good gentle herb that you can take. You can steam it. You steam the tea bags and it definitely like just cleanses out the body, the digestive system. You can add a little bit of eucalyptus, a little bit of peppermint, some ginger to cleanse out the respiratory system, open up the ears so that you can be able to listen and hear the ancestors speaking to you. Opens up that third eye and that throat chakra as well. The big thing about the senna is the senna opens up that solar plexus, opens up that uh, the root chakra, make sure that sacral chakra chakra is wide and prepared and ready. You want to make sure that you are fully and completely aligned. Now to open up your third eye chakra, as well as to open up your Ori chakra, your crown chakra, you want to make sure that something that you are doing is putting a little drop of Kanye pepper or cinnamon oil at your crown and at your third eye chakra. So that way that you are fully open and aligned and ready to receive, to receive messages from the universe and from ancestors and spirit guides at this time. The beautiful thing about the new moon energy is that it is an increase of intuition and it is an increase of ancestral energy and spirit guide energy. So you will receive a lot of messages. You may be having a lot of vivid dreams at this time. You may be getting a lot of words of wisdom and things like that from your ancestors. When you are sleeping, you may see, see your ancestors and see your loved ones who have passed on and transitioned to the ancestor realm in your dreams. There may be certain messages in your dreams. Pay attention to the signs and the omens in the universe. This is a highly intuitive time. New moon intuition, new moon energy is an increase of intuition. So you definitely want to make sure that you are paying very close attention to your intuition. So once again, make sure that you are fully detoxing your body, doing what you have to do to align and open up your chakra so that you can receive all of those messages. The center is great. The eucalyptus, the peppermint, the ginger, or the ginger is all of that is great in order to detox your body. These are all things that you can find in your local grocery store. Now, another thing you want to do aside from just detoxing your body, you want to also make sure you are detoxing your environment. To detox your environment, to cleanse the energy out of your environment, you want to make sure that you are cleaning your house from corner to corner. Make sure you place a little salt in your corner. The purpose of placing some salt in your corner is to make sure that you are mining the energy that is welcomed into your home, protecting your home. Salt, sea salt, fresh Himalayan sea salt. Uh, you can use pink Himalayan sea salt, which also can be found in your local grocery store. Any recommendations I give you all, I try to give things that I know that are in local grocery stores across the world so that everyone can have access and be able to do these rituals. So pink Himalayan sea salt, you can put a little bit of each corner of your household and that'll protect you from the hags as we say now south it'll protect you from anything negative anything that is not of your highest supreme energy once again, we are in a new moon cycle, so you want to make sure that you are manifesting at your highest supreme energy. So clean your house from corner to corner, put a little pink Himalayan sea salt. Another thing you want to do to cleanse your home, 
burn some sage, which um, it may not be easily accessible at your local grocer, but it is on Amazon.com. You can buy sage off Amazon. Um, I have purchased sage from Amazon before and it worked well. It burned well and it was pure California desert sage, which is pretty good. So you can buy sage off Amazon.com. If you don't have access to sage, you can also use fresh basil. Basil is also a household cleanser, which you can also buy at your local grocery store. So basil is a good cleanser as well. Palo Santo, um, if you have cleansing incense, that is also great to use as well. Another great incense to use or a great herb to use is dragon's blood, which is also a purifier and protector of your home. So you want to make sure that when you are cleansing your home, this is called smudging, the process of burning sage, basil, Palo Santo, dragon's blood, whatever. It's called smudging. You want to make sure that you open up your windows so that the negative energy has a place to leave. You have a place to release anything that does not serve you and you can welcome in the positive energy. Close those windows, sprinkle a little uh, of the sea salt on your window seal and that way you are sealing the energy within your home and you are cleansing your environment and starting anew. So we have done a body detox, we've done an environmental detox. The last thing you want to do is during this time, especially with the new moon, is you want to spend a lot of time in deep meditation and silence. The new moon energy is most powerful three days after the actual new moon appears. So the, our new moon was at its horizon or reached horizon April 22nd, the new moon in Taurus, this current new moon, April 22nd around between 10 and 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that means April 23rd, 24th, and 25th, you will start still feel this new moon energy. This new moon energy is still at its peak and it is manifesting and opening up gateways and portals for us to be able to travel through realms and to be able to manifest as we need to. So just be mindful that you definitely have time within these three days, you can practice these rituals. So something you want to do within these three days is make sure that you are cleansing and minding your mouth, mind your words. Now the thing with the new moon it's a high manifestation time. Quite often, we don't recognize the power of our tongue. You want to mind your words. Something that I mentioned in the live when discussing the new moon is be mindful that during this new moon, especially a new moon in Taurus, we have what I like to call a switchblade tongue. A switchblade tongue. That means your tongue is sharp. Your tongue can cut deep. Be mindful of how you are communicating with people, especially with the new moon in Taurus. Be mindful of that throat chakra. Be mindful of how you are communicating with people. Be mindful of the things you speak. Be mindful of your complaints, okay? So mind your tongue. Spend a lot of time, majority of your time in pure silence. Spend the majority of your time in pure silence during this time. Another thing you want to do really quickly going back to the body detox is to be mindful to stay away from alcohol um, as, as much as possible. You know, stay away from alcohol as well as try to stay away from uh, white sugar. You can use coconut sugar, you can use honey, but try to wait, stay away from white sugar and alcohol during this time. That's another great way to detox the body. The new moon can bring inflammation within the body. Inflammation, as far as the reason that the new moon brings inflammation, it's not necessarily a bad thing to have inflammation in the body it's sometimes. But the reason the new moon brings inflammation is because it is an elevation of the spirit outside of the body, right? Because once again, we are moving through realms. The, the, the gateways between realms at this time are very much open. So that can look like you may see some inflammation in your body during this next three-day period. That is okay, but you want to ensure that the inflammation isn't coming from excess alcohol or excess white sugar, which can cause physical inflammation. Move away from that. So that way you can mind the amount of inflammation in the body. Once again, be mindful, stay away from alcohol, excess white sugar, so on and so forth. The inflammation that you may notice in your body during this time is normal. We are moving and traveling through realms. Same way if you was to travel in the physical realm, you would see some physical inflammation. The spiritual realm is the same way. As you travel through the spiritual realm, you may notice some physical inflammation in the body. That means that you are traveling through realms. Relax your body. Mind your tongue. Mind how you speak. Mind what you say. For everything you say will manifest in the physical realm. So be mindful of what you say. Mind your switchblade. Put some honey on your tongue. 
channel some of that Oshun energy, put a little honey on your tongue so you can be able to speak sweetness and light and love. Put a drop of honey on your tongue or under your tongue in the morning, afternoon, and evening, okay? So be mindful of what you say. Be mindful of what you speak. Be mindful of who you speak on, okay? Be mindful of your complaints. I advise that everyone at this time wake up with gratitude out your mouth first. You can wake up with I am well mantras. You can wake up with I am happy. I am peace. I am light. Speak your I am mantras and speak light and love and manifestations and prosperity into your being. Whatever you say is what will manifest. So be mindful of those first words that you speak when you wake up. Okay? So those are just some new moon rituals. I went over physical detox. I went over um, environmental detox. I just spoke on minding your tongue. Another thing you want to do is be disciplined within your altar work at this time. So some spiritual work that we can do, some spiritual rituals and practices that we can do during this new moon and any new moon, not just this new moon, but any new moon. These recommendations are for any new moon. Something that you can do is mind your altar. Make sure that you are keeping fresh water on your altar. April is the altar month. This is the month of blooming. This is the month of flourishing. This is the flower new moon that we have in our horizon. So this new moon is the month of flourishing. This is the new moon of manifestation. So make sure that everything in your altar is clean. Make sure that you are constantly tending to and cleansing your altar, keeping fresh water out. Make sure you have your spirit water at your altar. Spirit water is pure, fresh water, alkaline water with a couple uh, with a, a couple drops or a, a couple shots of rum. When I say drops, I mean shots. A couple shots of rum in the water, in a bowl of water. That is spirit water. So keep a glass of fresh water, a small bowl of spirit water, Make sure that you have a white candle lit at all times or some type of candle depending on what you are trying to manifest. You can have a green candle for prosperity. You can have your yellow candle for love, so on and so forth. But be mindful to keep a candle lit on your altar white at all times. If you are not sure what color you should use, always go to white. White is a color for the ancestors, a welcoming candle for the ancestors, a welcoming candle for positive energy, a welcoming candle for light and love energy, as well as a manifestation candle, which is pure and clean that you can put in put any intention that you desire. That is the that is the purpose of a white candle. That is the intent of a white candle. Is that with a white candle you can put any intention that you desire into a white candle. You can simply write your intention on a piece of paper, tape it to the bottom of the candle, and then light the candle. Okay, so you can place any intention that you desire into that white candle. Keep a white candle lit. Place that on your altar spirit water, a glass of fresh water, and make sure that is on, that is on your altar at all times. You can also add any crystals that you would like. During this specific new moon, a rose quartz would be amazing to add to your altar. You can add a rose quartz. You can also add some pyrite as well, okay? to your altar, but make sure you are doing your altar work. Make sure you are giving gratitude to your ancestors. For all my patrons, patreon.com backslash the queen pole, where I teach a masterclass on African spirituality. You know, you guys know I talked for this month of April. I spoke about the nine day altar ritual where you welcome new ancestors in. So you want to make sure new agoon, you want to make sure that you are welcoming new ancestors, honoring your ancestors at your altar at all times. Okay. So that's some physical work some spiritual work, some mental work, as well as some environmental work that you can do, some environmental rituals. Now, why is a new moon in Taurus significant? This is very important. Taurus is an earth sign. Our new moon in Taurus occurred on April 22nd, 2020, which was Earth Day. Now, that is very significant because Earth is a sign of being unlimited. It is a sign of limited, uh, limitlessness, right? So when we think about having limitlessness, we are not limited at all. That means that we have the power to manifest any and everything that we desire, which is a pro, but it is also a con. I'm going to start with the con so that we can end on the good, which is the pros. Now, having the opportunity to manifest anything that we desire, the con of that is sometimes we don't recognize what we are manifesting by what we speak, by what we do, by what we think. Our thoughts are manifesting. Our words are manifesting. Any and everything that you are is manifesting. When I say are, I am as I am. So you are your thoughts. You are your words. You are your actions. 
be mindful of that, okay? Be mindful of that. So everything that you are is what will manifest. So that means that you have to mind your thoughts, you have to mind your words, you have to mind your actions and make sure that it is all aligned with your spirit in order to manifest the most positive that you can possibly manifest. Now, the beauty of having this opportunity to manifest anything that we desire is that we can manifest our deepest and wildest dreams and our deepest and wildest desires, which is always a great thing, right? So you want to make sure that you are fully, fully intentional. Now, the beauty of the full moon, excuse me, the new moon in Taurus. Now, having a new moon in Taurus, aside from just being able to manifest in abundance, this is, Taurus is an earth sign that is the bossed up energy. It is the leader of the earth signs. It is the fixed sign. It is at the forefront, the one that pops it off for the earth signs, right? So we have this limitlessness where we have the opportunities to manifest anything we want. So this gives us a, a lot of bossed up energy a lot of leadership energy taurus is the bull sign right so taurus is like is that leader it's that strong bull now the, the the let me once again let me do the cons first then i'll do the pros the con of that is it can be some stubbornness there the bull sign, the Taurus are known for being stubborn. There can be some stubbornness there. There may be some moments where, you know, you are not quite ready to compromise. Be mindful of that. Be aware of that. But also be aware that with compromise comes collaboration. So this is a great time to collaborate with people around you. Be willing to compromise. Be open to compromise. Now, the pro of that bossed up energy is that you have the opportunity to finally take charge and take control over all aspects of your life. Anything that manifests during this 28-day cycle is solely on you, whether good or bad, positive or negative, it is solely on you. You have the power, okay? You have the power. So take that power, hold on to that power, and enjoy it, but use it for good. Use it for your good as well as the good of the universe, for the good of the universe is your good. Now, be mindful that another thing, and I'm going to end, not end with this, but I'm going to include this as far as the new moon in Taurus, and this will be the last point for the new moon in Taurus. A new moon in Taurus will bring a period of restriction, there will be a period where we will all feel restrained, which I know is a little bit like, what? Because we have, you know, certain states, especially during this specific time where we are, we have quarantine happening, right? Where you have certain states who are slowly but surely opening up right now. Florida is open. Georgia is open. You know, shout out to Mayor Keisha Bottom who ain't having it. But Georgia is open. You know, so you have states who are slowly but surely opening up. So in our physical realm, we may start seeing what may seem like freedom. But during this new moon in Taurus, there will be a period where spiritually we feel restricted and you don't really know why. There will be a time period of uncertainty. And we may experience that at different points. But the, during this next 28 days, there will be a time period where you will feel uncertain. You will feel restricted. You will feel restrained. And you don't know what's going on. And it's an internal feeling and you may not necessarily know where it's deriving from. Stay steadfast in that moment. That moment where you feel restricted, that moment where you feel restrained and you feel uncomfortable, unsatisfied, and you don't know where it's coming from. Just stay steadfast. Do your altar work. Keep on going back to what you know you are, which is your I am mantras. I am well. I am peace. I am happy. I am abundant. Go back to your I am mantras. Make sure that you continuously know that you have the power to manifest your deepest desires and this is your time to boss up. So that time that you feel restricted, that time you feel restrained, that's when you need to spiritually boss up and you need to recognize your power and manifest your deepest desires, okay? So just know that that time and that experience is going to come within those 28 days. Please know that you are not crazy. You are not weird. You are not bugging out. It's, a, it's something that we will all experience at different moments in this time. It has to be staggered because of the entire universe, meaning the plants, trees, water, all of of us, the humans, animals, if we all felt that experience at the same time, it would not be healthy for the world. And the beauty of the earth on this beautiful earth day is that the earth knows what it needs. And the earth knows that we can't all have that feeling of restriction at the same time. We must give and receive reciprocitously. So 
that feeling will be staggered. But at the end of the 28 days, you'll be able to connect with other beings, friends, family, and say, did you ever feel like this? And they'll say, I felt like that a couple weeks ago. I felt like that the other day. That's okay. In that time, go in solitude, spiritually boss up, know who you are, and just keep manifesting. And that, that too shall pass, okay? So that is our new moon in Taurus. Once again, we have this new moon energy for the next three days. So up until about the 25th, really the early morning of the 26th, you can do all of this. Another thing I didn't speak on, I want to touch on really quickly, um, going back to rituals and practices, is spiritual bathing, in the live, I talked about spiritual bathing. In my previous live, I talked about spiritual bathing. But really quickly, I want to touch on the power of taking a spiritual bath. Um, I speak on spiritual bathing all the time. If you are a part of the wellness community, shout out to all my patrons. Patreon.com backslash the Queen Pole, where I teach a master class on African spirituality and wellness. If you are part of the wellness community, you know I talk about spiritual baths all the time. I give a lot of spiritual bath recommendations in the wellness community. The power of a spiritual bath, our skin is the largest largest organ on our body. Our skin contains multiple pores. Now, because we are energy beings, our energy dwells internally, but our energy seeps through and radiates through our pores, which manifest our aura. Now, our energy, as it goes through our pores, it creates an energy field outside of our body called an aura. That's what the aura is. The aura is your energy field. It is a reflection of your internal energy that comes through your pores and manifest as your aura. So you know how people say, I can read your aura. I can see your aura, which is the reflection of your internal energy. You have to make sure that you spiritually bathe so that way that your aura is an accurate reflection of your internal energy. Now, the power of spiritual bathing, as you move outside of your aura, your aura can travel up to six feet outside of your body, which as I spoke on in the last live is interesting about the whole social distancing thing and that they said stay six feet away from each other because I spoke on that multiple lives ago that our aura is six feet outside of our body, right? So be mindful that your aura goes six feet outside of your body. It comes through your pores. You want to make sure that your skin is purified and clear, well taken care of so that it can accurately reflect your internal energy. Another thing about spiritual bathing, aside from just cleansing out those pores and cleansing the skin so that you can actually accurately reflect your internal energy, another beauty about spiritual bathing is because it opens up those pores, those herbs and those, and those oils and whatever you put in that spiritual bath also seeps into your pores and cleanses your internal energy. So if you are going through something, if you are feeling unbalanced, if you are not feeling well, you take that spiritual bath, that energy from that water that you have submerged yourself in goes into your pores, opens up your pores, goes into your pores and cleanses your internal energy. When you emerge from that bath, you now not only have cleanse pores and open pores, but you now have cleanse internal energy, which will radiate through those newly cleansed and open pores as a now cleanse and positively, positively, positively reflective aura. Okay. So you just want to make sure that you are mindful to take your spiritual bath and submerge yourself in that good positive energy water. If you want to know what you should put in your spiritual bath or something you can do, I have a, a, a few spiritual bath uh, cleanses on patreon.com backslash the queen pole where I teach a master class on African spirituality. Once again, you can join that for any spiritual bath cleanses or you can actually contact me at thequeenpole at gmail.com for a one-to-one -one consultation um, and we can talk from there. Okay, so thank you so much, family. I appreciate your energy. Thank you for tuning in. For everyone that was tuned into the live, I definitely enjoyed it. I appreciate the energy. For those of you who tuned into the live and was commenting and all that other stuff and interacting, I always appreciate that energy but it deleted and here we are so thank y'all much love much light i really hope this is helpful if you have any questions leave it in the comments below or email me at thequeenpoet@gmail.com. gmail.com peace family